There he is right there. It's a big, big water monitor. Good morning, folks. I think today we have no idea what we're doing. We have no idea what we're doing today. Uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna go meet up with Keo, and we're gonna go around the city. Maybe go to his animal house. And whatever other adventures come our way today, we're just gonna go with them. And we're actually rolling the Bali tonight, so that's gonna be freaking sweet, man. Let's go. We have had breakfast, however, we're gonna start this day with some ice cream too. Oreo and cookies, I mean, I never, I've never gone with Oreo and cookies. Please. I'll take uh, I'll take Oreo cookie as well. Is it too early for gelato? I think it's about noon, so I think we're gonna have some gelato. All right, folks, we're back at Keo's house, and it's time for what? Brian and Brian. <laughs> First joke today comes from Sonia Perez. Hey, Sonia. And she wants to know, what did the cake say to the fork? Alligator. <laughs> this, guy, this guy's not even serious right now. Come on, we're trying to do something okay. serious what here, okay? What was the cake said to the fork? What does a cake, what did the cake say to the fork? Let's see, uh, I think there's gotta be a fork you joke in here somewhere, but I don't know what it is. This is a children's show. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, uh, oh, I don't know. What, what did the cake say to the fork? You want a piece of meat? I know, I know. We got one more, we got one more. <laughs> this one comes from my mom, okay? Hi, mom. Should a woman have a baby after 35? Of course. Well, she seems to think that, that no 35 is enough babies. <laughs> Before we leave, we're going to have a traditional Indonesian lunch. Kia's father has joined us, and so it should be really good. Let's get started with some fish lip soup. So in Indonesia, if you're not sweating, then the food is not good. The awesome thing about this dessert is that it's actually warm on the bottom, but cold on top. It defies physics. And this is amazing, it's delicious. And the thing about it, you drink it through a straw. But then there's little jellies in there and that you actually have to chew on too. If there's something you guys didn't know about me that you should, it's that I have a real ice cream problem. You can basically put ice cream on anything and I will eat it. Okay, it's two o'clock now. Our flight leaves at eight to Bali and we have to be there an hour early and it takes an hour and a half to get to the airport. That means we have three and a half hours left. What can we get done in that time? All right, we're headed off to the animal market. It's possible we might see some chondros, but it kind of depends on the season. We're just gonna have to see what we see when we see what we see. Yeah. Alright guys, so this entire street is like a pet shop. It's just pet shops up down the entire street. Everywhere, all the way up there, all the way back down there. It's a whole, it's just a big pet shop. Not like the place we saw the other day, like it was Black Market. It's like legitimate pet shops. Look at this macaw. So it's amazing to think that we can come to this market here in Jakarta, all the way across on the other side of the world, and see a pastel ball python. I'm to think that there was a time when pastel ball python was going for $15,000. And now we travel here to this third world country and they have one for sale right here in the market. It's just amazing. We got albino Burmese, blood pythons. And again, the, the care of animals here is much better than it was at that market that we saw before. This is like legitimate pet shops. And it's just amazing to see these animals make their way across the world.
You know, it's pretty cool that the people of Indonesia have such a love for animals. They have, they have an entire street dedicated to pet shops. I mean, this street is long. It goes on for days and it's nothing but pets. He's taking a breath. So we just stopped by one of Kyo's buddy's houses because we're in the area. He's got some really cool turtles. It's now 3.30, we got two hours until the plane ride. We got two more stops. Baby Komodo big, Dragon. Like... <laughs> and the little baby Komodo Dragons is so much more energetic than like that big one we were playing with yesterday. The thing was like a little fireball, man. I was so excited to see it running around like a little madman. Whew, it's like playing with a firecracker. You don't want it to blow up in your hands. Hour and a half until we get to the airport, we're heading to the golf course to go find reptiles. Who'd have thought? There's a cart. Make a move. Woohoo! <laughs> water pond right here. All right, so we're looking for water monitors on the golf course uh, in this, this pond right here. Stench of a pond. Walking right on the edge of it, I almost slipped. <laughs> Fell right in. That would have been just stinky time. Ow! These are some serious thorns. <laughs> We're chasing a big ass water monitor right now. Right here on the golf course, there's like a few of them. Okay, he was just over here, but the water's perfectly still, so that means he stayed on land. He's in this big opening. Oh man, he's a big guy. He's huge. How freaking cool. I do not want to fall in there. I just got stung on the leg by a big ass bee. Ow! There he is right there. It's a big, big water monitor. There's a couple of them down here. Look at the size of this guy. They're fast. There's a bunch of them around here, though. They're super fast. You guys see that? He's under this low, low-lying brush. I think he knows that we'd have a real hard time crawling under there. He's right. I'd almost be willing to crawl into those thorn bushes after him and get all cut up but then I'll be all cut up and then I'll be fighting with a monitor 
under some thorn bushes, which probably is a bad idea. So I'm hoping Brian, Brian's on the other side right now. I'm hoping he's gonna be able to flush him out towards me. Hey. Ah. Ah. I'm more dressed for a, a walk on the golf course. I didn't know we were actually gonna do like some serious real-time herping, which is why it's awesome. I don't care how I'm dressed, I'll do this naked. Brian, where you at? Right next to his tail. Look at this, guys. I'm literally, I'm right next to his tail. I could literally reach out and grab his tail, but I'm also deep underneath the bush where I could, there's no chance of me standing up. I'm literally laying on my belly. So I'm, I'm kind of worried if I grab his tail, if he tries to come around and come at me, I've got no room to move and dodge his attack or his, or his defense rather. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I thought that going herping on the golf course was going to be kind of a, ow, a joke. Well, I mean, I didn't think it was going to be a joke, I just, it kind of sounded like a joke, honestly. It's definitely not a joke. But I didn't get hands on him. Well, I touched his tail, but I wasn't able to actually handle him, which is probably a good thing, because I'd probably be doing worse than this beast thing. I'd probably have a monitor bite. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Uh, <laughs> that was a blast. Hey, thanks, Kale. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, that was awesome, dude. That's a good call. All right, we're, we're headed to the airport. We're supposed to be there at 5.30, it's now 6 o'clock. We're half our Lakers away from Brian's video to load. So, yeah, and it didn't upload. Thanks, Brian. You're welcome. Just talking to our taxi driver uh, about uh, making our eight o'clock flight in this bad traffic, and uh, he doesn't speak much English. But we kind of asked, you know, eight o'clock flight, are we good or or bad? And he, he kind of pointed at the traffic and said, bad. So it's not a very good sign. I'm not sure if we're going to make this flight or not. Uh, I guess we'll see what happens. the airport it's 7 30 our flight's at 8 we got a half hour to see if we can make it up there to the gate and check in and get our flight on time we'll see now we're walking through the airport trying to find where we need to check in for a flight and apparently we're at the wrong spot we didn't even book our own tickets Keo did which is really awesome but we got about 20 minutes till we need to be on our flight so I don't know how it's going we might just get on a later flight we'll see what works out but a little bit pushing the limit here. <laughs> All right, so we got the later flight. Didn't quite make our eight o'clock flight, but that's okay. We'll just get there a little later. It means a little more time to relax, not have to rush through security. <laughs> I gotta say, man, this is this is a beautiful airport. There's hardly anybody in line, which also makes it nice. But it's just it must be a new airport because it's gorgeous. I gotta say, this is. So, for the first time ever in my entire life, I have to take my little tiny tripods back to the check-in counter to be checked in. Apparently we can't carry them on this particular plane, although I've carried these on every other single plane flight I've ever been on in my entire life around the world. But, you know, apparently this time, not gonna happen. So we've gone to two different help desks that say help desk at the airline that we're at, and they keep pointing us down to the next help desk. This is our third help desk. Let's see if we get some help. Okay, I guess so. Third time's the charm, I guess. Hopefully we got our tripods back. Oh, yeah. All right, the boys are all loaded. We got about an hour and 45 minute flight. And we're gonna be doing all right, doing all right. We were only a little bit late because of this guy right here. But you know, that's a whole other long story. But you know, hopefully everything goes smoothly. We'll be on the ground shortly and be on our way to our little villa in Bali. Oh yeah. I think this is gonna be a relatively short flight. In fact, I think I'm gonna be there just like, and we're here.
Dude, why every time I say something do you say the same thing? I swear, I've been saying something and then I hear you say it like two seconds later. Or, I mean, every time I hear myself say it, it's like I hear it in your brain somehow. It's, it's freaking me out, man. I oh. feel like it's been happening all day long. Okay, so here's the deal. Brian and me are basically doing the exact same adventures. We're together on this thing, and we both happen to be daily vlogging. And we noticed that we have a similar style as far as what we're filming, so we thought, why don't we own it? Yeah, that's the way to go. So today's vlog is kind of special because we kind of decided, hey, we're gonna almost, let's do the same thing. Let's mimic each other and see how it turns out. What do you guys think? So go, go ahead, ahead and, and check, check out the link in the description, description for, for his vlog. vlog. <laughs> Man, what another crazy adventure today, guys. Gee, let's take a look at this place that we just arrived at here in Bali. It's pretty ridiculous. You know, Hillary and I actually stayed at a place similar to this on our honeymoon a while back. So we got our little kitchen area over there, little seating area, which is right next to our pool. Forrest is enjoying himself a little float in the duck. <laughs> And we've got these three rooms right here at the pool. And this is the room I'll be staying in. Of course a bed. But just look at the look at how beautiful this place is, man. Look at the roof. All the lighting, the attention to detail in here is crazy. And then behind this mirror, this is the bathroom if you want to call it that. It's like, it's almost open air. You got these walls, but up the side, the vines growing. It's actually open air up there. Toilet, of course. And then this gnarly shower. Look at this shower, dude. Pretty epic. And it, it, it continues. Go out this way and then you got to little bathtub out here, which is also kind of open air. And this place is incredible. Honestly, before we came on this trip, I was imagining some nights sleeping in the bush, you know? This is a far cry from the bush. I'm not complaining, not complaining one bit. Just kind of overwhelmed by how well we've been received here this time around. Ugh, so if tomorrow is anything like today, then it's probably going to be just as epic. Who knows what's going to happen? I know we, we're actually going to go check out uh, Ubud. And in Ubud, there is a monkey forest. And the monkey forest should be pretty sweet. I've been there one time before, actually, years ago. And if it's anything like it was then, now I actually have a video camera. It should be pretty sweet to check out these monkeys going crazy around this temple. It's actually like something out of Jungle Book. Something straight out of Jungle Book. Old ancient temple ruins and monkeys all over the place in a jungle-like setting. So that's definitely something you guys want to check out. But until then, you guys take care of yourselves and take care of each other. We'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.